Okay, all set. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. I'll call the meeting to order. It is 7.02. Looks like we're right on schedule 7.02 every meeting. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, Gwen is here. Jim is here. Uh, Dennis is here. Liz is supposed to be coming. Alex and Amelia um, had stuff come up tonight. They weren't able to be here. Alex did send in some comments, which we'll read into the record when we get to the appropriate moment. I'm Patrick O'Reilly. Um, and we have a representative uh, from the library here and a couple of members of the public, in addition to Todd Sousa uh, from the town. Um, first, so our second item is uh, approval of the minutes from March 21st, which you should all have in front of you. So there she is. Liz, Liz is not present. Uh, do I have a second for the minutes? Second. All any, um, any adjustments or changes at all? Okay, perfect. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Great. And we're going to turn it over to you, Teal, and they're going to go through the uh, options they put together for us. And um, they do need to get some direction back from us tonight. So please be prepared to uh, make a choice so that they can move forward with the rest of the information that they need to have from us to do the, um, you know, the graphics and the diagrams and all the stuff that is going to ultimately go to the to the town as part of the final report. So they, they are looking to get feedback from, uh, from us, if not tonight, um, by the end of the month. <laughs> the month so that all. Hey guys, uh, this is Darren. I'm dialed in. Sorry for being a few minutes late. Oh no worries, Darren. Thank you. We have, we have Brett and Keith and Darren um, on the phone, and I guess I'll turn it over to you, Keith. Yeah, great. Uh, it, it's great to see everyone again. Um, it's it's been a little while since we've uh, we, we've had some of our other meetings, but we've been busy kind of pulling together all the pieces that uh, that are bringing you know this project uh, and feasibility study really up to uh, up its up to uh, what's what's approaching the conclusion. All the pieces are really coming together. It's been you know a, a great process, and thanks for your flexibility uh, in being able to rework the schedule a little bit. You know, we thought it was important that. Um, you know, we were able to bring all the information, hopefully all the information that allows uh, members of the committee to make a, a, an informed and and, uh, and kind of complete um, decision about, about, the, about the project. Uh, in, in a way of uh, look at the agenda for this evening, you know, we'll, we're gonna just touch on briefly the, the events of uh, the, the 24th, we had an open house in the Wentworth School. Uh, and then we'll talk about the program and cost estimate ranges that was uh, circulated. Um, through uh, UTL from, from PNMC and uh, and Ballard King, uh, and then if if we get to it and it seems productive, we could talk about the uh, test fit that we did and the uh, and the construction cost estimate, basically the um, how we approached uh, sending information and working with the cost estimator, and then you know at, at the end definitely want to talk about the the timeline and, and the next steps uh, as we're moving on to the the next pieces of the project. Uh, so on the 24th uh, in the afternoon around uh, pickup time, uh, we had an open house at the Wentworth School. Um, Darren Barr from Valley King and Brett Benson and myself and Todd were in attendance. Plus we had, um, we had Patrick and we had Gwen and um, and um, a bunch of other people from, from the committee. It was great. Uh, Bill was there uh, through the afternoon. Um, we had set up in their lunch cafeteria right right by the entrance with great visibility. We had some parents kind of filtering in, and members of the committee were members of the planning board came in and dropped dropped by. It was it was more is uh, the attendance was was great. Of course, we always want uh, people to to be uh, engaging and and coming to these events. Uh, there were more people at one point. This is kind of as we were winding down. I want to make sure that I, I documented, you know, our setup uh, for for talking people through. We had kind of a U of of boards and uh, and members of of the committee and uh, and the consultant team were stationed at at each station to go through uh, the different the different pieces of the project. So you know, coming in on um, when you when you first enter uh, a. a graphic talk about the project timeline and really showing uh, you know where where the project is how we're kind of in the last a uh, couple phases of the feasibility study and then how we anticipate and uh the project moving forwards opportunities for uh community input um and you know really how how what we look at what we see as the durations of the different pieces coming through until you know eventually the move in opening and then a summary of the building spaces uh that we've been developing over the last several months uh, and and sizes and kind of the, how they relate to uh, the, the different types of program, whether it's community and education or fitness and sports or, or back house. 
Uh, we had Darren Manning uh, aboard about the financial structure of daily emissions and membership uh, and expenses and revenue, and aboard about the site options. Uh, the, we were, had an opportunity to talk through the sites that we considered and talk about other uh, pluses and minuses of, of sites across town. And uh, as a way to uh, you know gauge some of the aesthetic interests of town, but also to generate excitement for the project, uh, an opportunity to do some, uh, some dot voting uh, on look and feel for the major program uh, portions, the interior, uh, interior athletic spaces, the exterior character, the community spaces, um, the aquatic spaces, and so it's it's been it's been great to kind of look through this and and try to parse out um, you know what was what was a clear favor and what kind of has a, a mixed opinion, which it's always tough to know how to read some of those slides, some of those images where you've got uh, a lot of green, a lot of red, um, and so you, you you wish I had more more opportunity to talk to people about uh, why uh, it elicited strong opinions from both sides, um, and so we're definitely be, uh, keeping this in mind as as we as the project kind of moves forward and we we start maybe uh, thinking about some uh, opportunities to uh, look at some uh, some of the character that could be uh, involved in the project. Um, through the course of the afternoon, I won't go through all these, but we had you know definitely some interesting uh, quotes and tried to pull out um, where we saw some of some of the interests and concerns of of members of the, of the public and. And we'll have an opportunity to talk about this in a second, but you know there are definitely people who um, are, are concerned about the cost structure and want to make sure that it was it was fair and equitable and it seemed uh, it seemed appropriate and wasn't pricing out people of the community. Again, you know this doesn't uh, it, there could be sub opportunities for subsidies or sponsors, and so it was a great opportunity to talk about you know like that how a lot of times you know even though we're presenting. Um, the estimates on the page that a lot more goes into it. And I think that that's true for both the, you know, the test bits that we're talking about and even, even the cost estimate and et cetera, how these things can be deployed. Um, you know, there's concerns about making everyone feel, uh, feel welcome, especially seniors. There's a athletic, there's a lot of athletic spaces, athletic heavy. And so making sure that everyone feels like it's a, a welcoming place, that there's a big community component in addition to athletics. Um, and you know there was concern about the fact that this is a, a big project that's uh, tracking with other capital projects in town. That was obviously a, a point of discussion that that came up. Um, but uh, the importance of of meeting space was uh, was really foregrounded by the people you know that that we talked to. You know, finding a place for those homeowners associations and 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 meetings, et cetera. Um, so I won't necessarily go through all these quotes. We distributed the the deck, and they're available on time, but uh, or online. I thought that it, the discussion was really great, and it was it was great to interact with members of the of the, uh, of the public, and I'm sure they appreciate having members of the committee there to to kind of uh, take temperature and offer uh, more background and uh, and and really add, provide some color to uh, the process. Uh, in addition to all the times that we we've, we've been able to uh, meet with the public and, and have community engagement events. Um, I want to hopefully just take a, a, a few moments to talk about, uh, to have a brief discussion by members of the committee uh, who were able to attend, really kind of get their feedback. Um, you know, the one thing we were all uh, taking different um, different stations. I was kind of positioned at the, at the site and then floating around and talking to, to listen to different conversations that are happening, but it's, it's tough to be everywhere at once. And so we were hoping to um, hear from members of the committee who, uh, who were able to attend that day, um, you know, their, some of their feedback and how they thought it went and uh, really to find out, you know, here's some some questions to think about, you know, which programs were people mo most excited about? Um, were people wanting to talk about the program, the site or the cost? Um, were the people enthusiastic about the site that we were looking at? You know, how did people think about that? What was their first reaction? And then, you know, how, how uh, we could maybe coordinate with the school committee if that makes any sense or what, what's been the uh, relationship with, between those. So I'd be happy to um, I'll try to facilitate the discussion, but really an opportunity to for members of the committee to, to talk about what they witnessed at the, on the 24th. So one thing that I realized quickly though is that no matter what happens, there's a huge educational process the town does. Like so even some of the comments on here, we know the answers of why, mm -hmm. you know, 
oh, what can you teach the school gym? Well, it can't be used. They're not even gym. So there's a big process about it's gonna have to happen in this to show not the need, but like, you know, everyone wants a uh, naysay is the wrong word, but like they always have to go, why can't you do this? It's easy. This would be easier. They don't know the stuff you've taken. So I feel like there's gonna be a process that, that gets to like, why can't you use digital? Three of the schools you're talking about, the gyms aren't, they can't be used for anything outside of, you know, little kids play areas. So I thought a lot of like a lot of questions that we went over early, people are way back set wall on some of those questions. So anything that if we try to do something is going to take a pretty big informational output. And that's just one of the, you know, some of the questions that we answered a long time ago or came up with realizations of most people don't know about those steps. So I said, you know, not everyone's watching our meetings every day, knowing where we are. And I just, I thought there was a lot of information out there. People, they want to know what's going on, but they don't have it, which is a, where we should be in this process. And, and I like the questions on here, the kind of leading questions in, in this section and here, then the blue bubbles here. Like, I think it would be nice to have some of that foundational Q&A, you know, questions and answers as part of the report, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would go a long way to helping you know, a, a, a disinterested observer up to this point really become educated up to the level that the committee has been educated over the last several months. Like a frequently asked question. Oh, right. sorry. Yeah, yeah this, sorry, this is Darren. I was just going to say, are you thinking almost like a, a up in front by the executive summary, almost like a frequently asked question? So if somebody wants to know, well, why can't we just use school district facilities? It's readily available. Right, and it runs from, we have the ocean, what do we need a pool for? Sure. You know, yeah. you know, all right. those other questions that have come up. Yeah. Go, go to the ocean and see how many people are standing on the beach kind of thing. Right, right. Yeah. I think all those, when you have those meetings, it's tough because everyone comes in with one foot the opposite way. Like, they're not one foot in, they're one foot, like, you know, they they want to question everything because they're already, they're skeptical already. Yeah. So I've heard a lot of that cost. You know, traffic at that site, this site, you're taking away this, you're adding that, and just you know, a lot of, I don't know, it's trepidation. I don't know what it is, but I think those questions you're seeing are a lot of the ones that everybody has, and they mm -hmm. all want that answer before they can even begin to move that process forward. Maybe that's just the circles I run in, which is, you know, my kids are in school, so but I see a lot. Yeah, I understand that too, for sure. Um, I think that education has to happen kind of organically and, and you know I view the charge of our committee to you know take the input that we received from you know all the sources that we've cited there was previous studies and input and you know this open house is one is one of them one of many and just come up with what the community would like to have and what what would be acceptable to to many now when you start to talk about weighing cost benefits I kind of view that as that's for the next committee really that's the that's the charge of the council and whatever they do decide to appoint a design committee and to do you know things like value engineering and, and you know what what is what is actually feasible and, and and taking into some of those funding uh options as part of that too i know that thought has some ideas on you know what that might look like down the road and, and how the how the operating budget plays into it. If you start to pull out some of the pieces, then you know you really you see you you all saw the numbers that we have. I mean, it's really kind of going from from what option one is to option three is you're really only talking about you know, it's less than less than ten percent. It's about ten percent less. Um, a big revenue in, in cost, out, it could, but the revenues with you know losing, losing the other pieces would you know it, it may over a 10-year period it may end up actually costing just as much yeah. and, and you have you have you know kind of pulled out pieces that were important to the community to the community that we've heard from the well, one thing that i get away from all this and, and again being on the first school build committee and then following the meetings that are going on now and the process they're going through is that um, you know, there's a long way to go before something, if it was considered to go to the voters, is ready to go to voters, you know, and because the challenge that I see and I hear from everybody is what does it mean for me? And until we have this final report that says, here's the data that was compiled, here's the build cost to today with projections years down the road and say went to voters in two years, right. what that percentage is, 
cause and effect, um, and then people can actually see what it's in for me. It's really hard to get everybody engaged. And I think that's, you know, the school people, uh, people that were voting on the school didn't really get engaged until the vote was actually happening. And then they were trying to answer questions as they were going. And that's a hard thing to do, especially when you're talking about large numbers. So whatever recommendation you make and you teal takes forward and runs down, there's so much, I think, before we're even ready to consider going for the voters to say, okay, it's almost like this feasibility is that first step to say, okay, we've taken all the information that you've put together, we've synthesized it, we've revenized it, we've put it to a construction cost. Now, what do you want to do with it? And, but we have then designs both fiscally and architecturally to say, this is what this means. And I think that was a challenge in the school build was we didn't have all that and it, you know, it didn't affect everybody. So then all the questions were happening during the vote. And so I think that we're, I think all the things we've talked about trying to get the, the, the Q and A done to be able to educate every chance we get. And then when the opportunity does arise, whatever that is, um, you know, we have ample time to educate the folks on why the decisions were made um, and then what that impact is, you know, because then everybody's got to realize, is it for me or is it not? Um, and that's an individual choice whenever we get to that point. And, we, and we've acknowledged that, the you know, there are clearly issues with the school facilities as well. And this is a, you know, a, a parallel track. Who knows which one? I would assume the school issues would be addressed first, but that's not for this committee to decide right. or to even necessarily take into consideration. We are trying to figure out what a community center would look like and what it, what what the right. and what the figure out functions and the forms. What the community is telling us we want and what would meet that need. Right. Option A B C. Right. right. And that from is, there, yeah, there was two and the two things in the charge, right? Yeah. It was meet the goals and the needs of the community based on all the data we have and to make the most cost effective building. To meet those needs. To meet those needs. Then X, Y access that somewhere in the right. process. Right. Council, future committees, finance, fundraising, that's a whole nother piece, you right. know, whenever that happens. Right. So there's not just some positivity in the moment, too. I don't want to say everyone's that there's a little trepidation, but people, yeah. oh, that'd be nice. Oh, that would be you know, I get a lot of those. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice to see. I'd like to see something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a, you know, dipping the toe in on some of those things, but oh, I can see why you need the gym or a pool or you know, somebody campus. Right. Yeah, yeah, they would. Like they might all not, saw might not be me, but I something get it. on the list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. That makes sense for what we need, especially if they ask you a question about well, what did you figure out? Oh, you explained something. So, oh, that makes sense. Um, so it was good to see that, you know, but it was a it wasn't three thousand people, right? So right. It, it was you right. had to have those conversations yeah. to get to those. Did points. you experience any of your experience? You talked to one person and yeah. I really like this. I think this is important. Great. That's something we're entertaining. Talk to another person. No, nothing, nothing about this. I really would like this. Something completely different. You see with the stickers, and one of them yeah, is half green, half red. Yeah. And, and, and I, same, same picture. Which is what got me to uh, options one, two, and three. And I went, that's so arbitrary, taking things out. And yeah. saying, oh, yeah, you can go from 82 to 74, whatever that number is, uh, 82 to 79 to 74. And I go, well, I wouldn't agree necessarily with the items that were selected to be removed. Because the input I was getting was that that's what you're removing was something that was a, something they wanted. That was what people wanted. So I'm going, well... And if you ask 10 people, ten and, 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 and there's no denying it, it's expensive. Yeah. When we see the numbers, we go, no. Yeah. Yeah, we can't it, go back in time and build the 10, 15 years ago. It's, it is what it is. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, it's just reality. What, what If you're going to build a community center, it's going to cost in the 70 to 80 million dollar range. Yeah. Now, that may get wiggled and wormed and whatnot uh, um, by all those who will come after us, town council, et cetera, finance committee, uh, public input. Uh, but our job is to try and present something that says, this is the input we got. These are the things that people wanted. 
yes, it came out to 82.4, but it was the range of, of things that were prominent. Right. right. Uh, and not anywhere near everything that was asked for on exactly. the or even in that had high marks on the surveys that we had at our disposal. I mean, there was more, we've already made some, you know, pretty significant decisions. Yeah, because the other way, when you're looking at a project of this magnitude and some communities go this way and they do a lot of work and then they come back and said it doesn't meet the initial charges. Sometimes the community says, you know, we've done this exercise too. Uh, I need something that's $50 million all in. What can I get for that based on the survey? And that's a different approach. That was a different charge than you guys were charging. It right. doesn't mean that that doesn't what comes out of this exercise down the road, but you have all the work and all the factors based on the charge that you were given. Meet the needs, cost-effective building. That's Those were the two main things of yeah. the charge. Yeah. Um, so. and, and helping to identify a site where this facility with these amenities could possibly fit on. And that was an add-on, right? The site piece was really, yeah. well, an add-on was do it on town-owned property first and show me you can't do it on town-owned property before we go ask for mm -hmm. financial assistance to purchase something. To purchase, right. Right. That's the other thing. You, you could find another site, but these numbers change drastically if you move. Well, and I'll let Keith and Darren chime on. I mean, what I understand, and we can get into the other piece, is that the 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 part that changes is you got to purchase it. A lot of the amenities, you know, picked up site design as far as stormwater and that sort of stuff because there's not a lot of obstacles on this site per se, besides some of you know the you know traffic and some of those things. So but you're not building two stories into a hill that didn't exist, you know, and right. trying to to make a building around the site you have. We had three. This site here where they had to blow in the ledge all of a sudden took up a quarter of the budget because they had to blow in the ledge, you know, so that's, you know, those are the site costs. And that's why they wanted us to do it on town owned that we knew a lot about that mm -hmm. met your strategic criteria as far as walkability, close to the schools, trying to hit those target groups. So, yeah. um, Clark, can you comment on what the school committee is looking at now? Because one of the questions that we did get asked yeah. was, why can't we just add this on to the new school where if there's going to be a new school? So I yeah. think we think if we're going to be, yeah. I mean, we're kind of working in a silo yeah. here and and the community may not like that if we don't at least consider. Yeah. It's a great, so what, it's what a great question. And I, and um, I follow the meetings after the fact. Uh -huh. um, what I know right now, and if anybody else knows different, they can obviously correct me, but their the existing school Build committee is formalizing the report. I believe it's four options they've been working on independently to bring back to school board and town council. And then it sounds like there'll be some funding to support how do you get to a final selection with the help of a strategically selected committee that have people that have those resources. This first committee was anybody that wanted to be involved, gather all the ideas. I think they've got it down to four choices. And then they're going to hand off that work to town council and the school, which then will have some resources with a firm to help them narrow down those four choices to one that will serve a purpose with the help of a newly formed committee that's appointed based on their you know, building backgrounds, finance backgrounds versus I want to contribute type help thing. So, so we don't know if they're looking at like one new school or only if I remember correctly, there, there, there's. I think one model that shows a consolidated school, if you right, and three that show independent versions of a fourth elementary is what I think I can recall the latest version. Steve's nodding over there. I think that's correct. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't watch Monday's meeting yet, but I think that's where they're leaning towards. And so um, I think that once, and again, this being done in August, when that next group forms, is there parity? Is there an opportunity? I don't, you know, again, site size and finding a price of property was the biggest because that was the initial conversation when we first started looking. When I was on the school build, it was okay. They need 20. We needed five. Where do we find 25? You know, those parcels to meet the same criteria kept getting bigger. So then finally they pushed, you know, we just got to focus on the school. And then so we ended up. And that's why we're kind of in a silo, like you said, just yeah. kind of doing our work. And it's going to be used at some point. It's going to be valuable information. It's going to be useful information to the council, 
need to be the school board at the same time, facilities, time management, to like, try to see how that all might mesh together. Where it pairs and when. Yeah. Like their, their model, I mean, if they go with four schools or whatever, they could, they might dive into this and say, well, let's do some of these things at some of those places and you can lessen one or the other. But right. we're not going to know for, oh, yeah. Right. And again, your charge was to get to this point. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of the work that you had to do was theoretically in a style, but from all the community input that you had. And so um, it, by not having this done, then it's all theoretical when they go look and say, okay, if we wanted to add a lot going down a rabbit hole, putting a lap pool on it, pool, what does that mean? We've got some build costs, we've got some stuff. And, and yeah. we'll get into that discussion when we get to the three options, because you'll see, you know, uh, what the community asked for theoretically, and then what the third option is more like a self-sufficient athletic center with not a lot of community good, and the one in the middle is kind of the both. And so that's where your discussion will come into play. And that's part of it too. Right? Part of our thing too was also to make this revenue choice you can. That's what you start putting these things into schools. There's a totally different revenue structure that is just right. You, that that would and that's decentralizing, all decentralizing, the and, and, and all those things, and right. totally different models of you know you code into this building versus running a facility that can be turned over all the time every day for multiple functions. Just it's a completely different model, but at least we'll have a, our work as you guys this would is ask. Completed right. for them to be able to put in any sort of timeline. Um, the only and, and the timing of it, excuse me, was was I think appropriate, and I think the council saw that there was a, a lot of data from the previous couple instances where we've looked at a community center or senior center or rec center, or whatever you want to call it, previous versions that was going to get stale if we waited until the school was completely done. So it really was good to take that information that we had, all those surveys, all that work that was done, and get it to a company like Util and have them put it to a, you know, a formalized plan with designs and and prices and, and, and timelines and all that so that we have not wasted the efforts that happened over the last 10, 10 or 12 years or so. so. So Keith, I think we've got a good segue into your program cost estimate kind of discussion. We've dipped our toe into a little bit, so. Great, and I'm actually, I'm gonna take it from here, Todd, and oh, talk about it the uh, different, the cost estimate that we had completed. And as you are all touching on earlier, we priced uh, one option. That's the program that we've discussed and agreed upon in past meetings. It meets all of the needs that were identified through surveys and all of our interactions over the last several meetings. Um, just at a very high level, that included an eight lane lap pool, a recreation pool, seating for the pool, three basketball courts, an elevated walking track around that uh, gym, cardio and free weights, fitness studio, and then some of the uh, less recreation and more community focused items like the multi-purpose room, meeting rooms, a game room, child watch, a warming kitchen, and then unique to our um, ice rink site, a replacement of the um, uh, facilities shop space uh, that would need to be that would be displaced by this particular site, and then I sorry I skipped over your the office suite Todd for community services as well. So that's option one, and then we wanted to look at well what you know what, we know that this is kind of the ideal scenario for the town. It meets uh, many of the needs that were identified. It doesn't meet all of them, um, as you're saying, Patrick. The committee's done some hard work to make sure that. Uh, all of the items that we were included in this price, uh, in this cost estimate, uh, reflected the best case, but not a uh, pie in the sky wish list. We did want to look at what if uh, we optimized this center for revenue generation while uh, trying to reduce upfront capital costs. So we came up with option two, which is a kind of medium option where we have one pool, either the eight lane lap pool or a recreation pool. And on the next slide, we'll show how that impacts revenue. Reduce the number of basketball courts to two. So we take away one uh, from the three and then take out the meeting rooms and the facilities shop space that uh, the town would find other means to replace that uh, shop space either on this site or somewhere else. We know that the building itself is uh, not in great condition, is probably scheduled to have some major repairs in the future anyway. That might be a different capital cost. So that's option two. 
And then option three, we really wanted to look at, well, what does it mean to take away some more of the kind of community oriented spaces and try to optimize as best we can for revenue generation. And so what comes out of that then is the pool spectator seating, the elevated walking track, uh, and then some more of those community uh, purpose uh, functions. So the multi-purpose room, meeting rooms, and so on. This also contemplated the building being one story as opposed to two. And so that's why that elevated walking track, for example, goes away or the elevator, elevated uh, pool spectator seating. So if we flip to the next slide, what we came up with with our cost estimator is kind of three values. It is broken down into construction costs. So that is what the value of a construction contract with a general contract or a construction manager would be when it goes out to bid. We're expecting that the building would cost about this much. So in option one, that's $60 million, option two, 58, 59, and then option three, about $55 million. And then there are soft costs. So that is what it costs to have uh, project management, uh, to have to hire designers and engineers, um, to pay for all of the furniture and the equipment that's going to go into this uh, building, and you know the testing and other things that go along with that. That's about 35% of the total construction cost. That's a placeholder, but we found that on uh, across projects that that's a good uh, number to hold. And so when you add those two together that gives you the total project cost. So from option one, 82 million down to option three, uh, just under 75 million. And I just wanna highlight our little note here at the bottom. We're in a feasibility study. So all of these costs are very conceptual. Uh, they can certainly go down. It's possible that they could go up. There's a lot of things we just don't know. Um, and as the design develops, uh, the, these costs become uh, sharper in focus. All right, so let's go on to the next slide. And this is where Darren's analysis comes in. And Darren, if you don't mind, I'll just speak to it. And then if there's questions, uh, we'll let you field them. But we wanted to look at each of these op options from a perspective of revenue and operations and what level of subsidy might be required from the town to support the services. So option one, the option that has the most community benefits in terms of meeting spaces and meeting rooms and so on uh, is the one that requires, interesting, not the most subsidy, uh, but it does require about $100,000 of subsidy every year. But on a cost recovery basis, uh, that's about 96% of total revenue is offset, or 96% uh, of cost of operations is offset by revenue. So essentially 4% of the cost of operating this is being subsidized by the town in this first option. When we look at option two, this is the version that uh, took away one pool. From a construction standpoint, a lap pool or a leisure pool, they're about the same cost. But from a revenue standpoint, you can see that there's quite a bit of difference. So if we eliminate the lap pool, now all of a sudden the subsidy from the town shoots up. It's over $200,000 of subsidy every year. Uh, whereas if we uh, keep the leisure pool and eliminate the lap pool, now we're actually looking at a surplus that revenue is exceeding the cost of operations. And so you can see this in the cost recovery in the version that keeps the lap pool, we're at 90%. In the version that keeps the leisure pool, we're actually you're operating at a profit at 102% of cost recovery. And then on option three, really a very similar kind of scenario. The numbers change a little bit uh, because the revenue is, is offset with the smaller facility size. But as on a percentage basis, it's very similar to the uh, leisure pool option of option two. And we also wanted to point out, um, as Darren probably would if I didn't, that there is a period of stabilization after the facility opens. And so we're projecting these numbers after about a three year stabilization period. Now let's go on to one more slide and then maybe we should pause there again if we have questions. We wanted to just illustrate the time value of money here, which is we're at the feasibility study. We're getting towards the end of our feasibility study. As you all have discussed, there's a, a budgeting process and then ultimately a vote that will go to the town to approve the money to pay for this facility. The longer that this project or this process goes, the more expensive it becomes. That's just 
kind of the reality of where we are relative to construction costs. So we just wanted to put on here, if this were to go on to the 2024 ballot, that's the construction costs that we're, we're projecting is a kind of range of 74 million to 82 million. That may not be a realistic timeline for the town. If it goes to 2025, working with our cost estimators, we're projecting a 4% escalation. So now that range goes from 77 to 85 million. If that's not realistic, looking towards 2026, which is another 4%, these compound, so it's not precisely 8%, it's a little bit more. And now we're looking at 80 million to 89 million for the same facility. And just like you said, if you could go back 10 years, this facility would cost a lot less. And if we go forward 10 years, the, the facility will cost a lot more. So I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, kind of imagined uh, a timeline and that this, the value of this project increases as the timing goes out. So why don't I pause there and we can add, answer any questions you have about construction costs, about soft costs, and uh, some of the information that we just reviewed. Start at the end there. I I, I think it it's it's not fair or accurate to have any jerk action to say that this is you know this is the timeline we're finishing this at ten months and then in the next three months it's going to be going on the ballot. So I'm glad that you put that on there um, to illustrate that you know this is what a timeline would look like whenever it gets picked up again. That is potentially how it might look. Um, so from the time that it got approved by the by the voters, it was going to be a you know a three plus year project. Um, from that point to the time that it might actually be open. So um, I appreciate you, you doing that because I don't want anybody to kind of look at a timeline in a vacuum and have a knee-jerk reaction to saying, you know, they want to, they want to do the they being whoever, whoever they is that's going to decide <laughs> to put it on the ballot against the council. Um, but it's not, not at all what we're, what we're either promoting or, or what have you. It's just a realistic timeline from uh, an overall project um, status and, and and that's where we are and we are not saying that we are going to get to the next step in, in the next three months so i appreciate that thank you uh, how how would a building like this be financed can you talk a little bit about that so that that's a conversation so at there's there's multiple ways and so one of the things that we were going to talk about at the end of the meeting that i'll mention now is that the major goal tonight is to hopefully choose a model. And then at our next meeting, which would be in July, would be to review the process of where uh, UTL and, and Ballot and King are in the final report stage, as we could see, but then also for us to develop what are other funding options that are legitimately clar clarify for a building of this size. and. You know, again, location matters, whether it falls into some of the town funding options, not going down a rabbit hole, tip or other financing um, consideration, um, but then working with um, sponsorship, naming rights, donations, endowments, like what are the potential are realistic where, and uh, I haven't gone down that rabbit hole until yeah. we have this number, but I think that's our next step to be able to consider because the way I see this, whenever council decides to, to vet this with the public, whatever that next step is, I think they'll end up being another committee consisted of some people here, maybe others that have a financial and marketing background to say, okay, how do we, if our goal is to raise 10 million in other resources, what does that mean? I'm not educated enough to speak on if this landed on this type of property, what are the other resources the town have through different funding resources? So they, I can't. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it might be a town council function. I just I was just curious. Well, no, I think that I mean the simple answer is they could say this whole thing is going to the taxpayer. I don't think that, you know, I think the question is going to be what are other alternate funding sources whenever this goes to the taxpayer. But it's going to be financed over a period of years. So I mean, oh whatever this is, this will be a 30 yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the ultimate Whatever the final Elder, number that needs to go to the would be a 30 year bond. Yes, but there may be ways to finance uh, 10, 15, 20 million of that through brand sponsorships, yeah. endowments, things like that. Yeah, so that thing's to be to buy less to the taxpayer. Right. Get those things. But until we have that model to be able to then go on the bed, and the library kind of did that when they finished theirs, was looking at, okay, what is our fundraising capacity? What's yeah. our naming rights? We have a little different, I think, avenue than the library did it. it, it 
fair or unfair is we have some larger spaces that draw a lot of people. And you're talking about a lap pool or, or three gymnasiums. There is some, I think there's some significant naming right power there for mm. sponsorship because of just the amount of people that would pull through that. And you can see that on some of the facilities around here um, in Maine and in New England. Mm -hmm. So, but again, I don't want to do that piece myself yet because we don't even have a number we're talking about. Okay. So that would that would be the probably the design. Yeah, the design but also the fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just again, cart for the horse. This committee or community needs to decide what they want, and then we kind of get them to how you get there. And so, again, keeping on your task, um, which is hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to get some feedback from people about the about the options. Um, I thought it was interesting. I made notes. It's two story for option one, two story for option two, and one story for option three. And then just kind of the things that, you know, where we were. Get on this site of getting rid of that facility space. So options two and three, you'd have to replace that somewhere else and some other at some at some cost, obviously. Um, yeah. And 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 then just and option three is displacing community services from the facility. We know that they're not going to be able to be where they are right now forever. Mm -hmm. um, so there's other, you know, there's there's cost savings from going to one of those, whether you want to look at it from a construction facilities perspective or from a uh, operating perspective, but I just don't want to lose sight of those other pieces at the bottom of that list that have real costs to be relocated and, and sourced also. Right. And, well, that, and, and, and that's not in your numbers, right? Those, just to be crystal clear on that, Brett, there's no estimate of replacing those other facilities that can pull out, pull out in these cost savings numbers on the, on the construction side. That's right. Yep. The, that would, the, there's, they're not accounted for in option two or three. Right. I guess my initial reaction is is that there's not enough of a difference in the cost yeah. to justify uh, what a, a great number of the residents want. Uh, I mean, not that $2 million is nothing, but in comparison to uh, $80 million, uh, I mean, I, I just don't... Uh, my personal opinion is, is that there's not enough of a cost reduction to that I would seriously consider option two or three. Especially if you're going to go option two with the with the with the lap pool, and I, and you look at that diagram, the one that had like like you pointed out that had the equal number of red and dots was the recreation pool. It was the recreation pool. The recreation pool was comfortable, seemed to be somewhat controversial from that small group of mm -hmm. people who came to that open house. But the lap, but the the lap pool was overwhelmingly positive and and like it's awesome. two, had to be included. It's a thousand dollar a year swing to right. lose one or the other. You know, like to choose because there's so many more people that would go to a leisure pool by subscription. You know, right. people, then with a lap pool, which is really a smaller segment in the school. Right, but, but yeah, but, but if you eliminate the lap pool, then then the whole concept of the, the pool goes out of the of the town's high school's swim team. I mean, that was that was what drove us. Or not drove us, what led us to increasing from eight, six to eight, six lanes. Eight, six eight lanes yep. was was really the high school, not the rec, not the black pool swimmers. If you were going to take and say we're going to add pool on the school and drop twenty million dollars out of that building, maybe it makes sense to do yeah. something like that. But to, I would say what I, I did nine point three percent, and there's going to be a strong you know any of these things is just strong reason for most of them that were put in there and i'm sure the other ones like the warming kitchen probably isn't a huge expense compared to but like some of these other things uh, uh, the, the gym, we're not a basketball gym but the, the gym field space or a whole pool it's got a big difference yeah know? and you know a successor to us may be asked by the or whoever's going to make the decision likely the town council to cut back and make that choice but i don't think it's for us to make that choice at this point. I it's, agree because that's not what the survey says. The survey said well, option one. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and we and we we cut out things that weren't that didn't have yeah. either space sent had space sense to it because of the, the constraints of the sites that we have um or overwhelming support from the surveys and the feedback that we got. 
Mm -hmm. okay. Different piece of land that fit differently, where you might have two stories built into it. Right. Then some of these elevated, not elevated, all make sense. But for nine percent, it's like why cut something right. now? If they decide yeah. in the end, at the end, the budget seventy million, then you make cuts and you figure it out. But right, I just don't know. I don't. I don't see anything over again. If we were talking ten, fifteen million dollars between each one. We could say, well, if we do this, we do that. But yeah. I don't. For me, it just didn't. They weren't big enough. And the, the operational savings between the lap pool and the leisure pool are, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a $270,000 swing. Yeah, like 270 to lose one over the other. And obviously that shows you that the leisure pool is going to get a heck of a lot more use. Right. At least in terms of people, you know, right. buying into it. The but, but I think we know when everything that we have heard as a committee, if there's not a lap pool in this, mm -hmm. it's never going to pass, yeah. probably. Yeah. Right. If you right. took the pool out of it, if you have a bunch of people who made it way smaller <laughs> and cheaper and, and different, right. and, and that seems to be the pool is like, I mean, I'm not a huge, I don't swim like that, so I'm not, but everything along the way, right. is, I don't care if the pool costs 50 million bucks. If it's not in there, it's dead. Yeah. But it has to be in here somewhere. That's right. basically the town feedback. It's the one thing that seems to fit every segment, young to old, you know, school, youth, sport. Yeah. It's in there. And that kind of been the same with the walking track, you know. And I guess maybe you can say that, of course, a pickleball, but we know that a lot of courts and things are going to be used by youth schools and the teams and things like that. But that walking track and the pool seem to be the multi generational pieces that everybody wants. Right. So. Okay. So uh, that's a question I had on option three. Um, we it's because it's one story. We don't have any walking track at all. Well, or you just can, not elevated. You can walk around a quarter. You can or walk quarter. around the building. Okay. It wouldn't be a dedicated, right? right. There's not that's a dedicated right. track. Right. And we have that right? brief. Yes, and Keith's nodding his head. Yes, it's not a dedicated space, but facilities that have one story facilities typically. And feel free to chime in, gentlemen, if you. But typically, they they line the outside of a gymnasium. They add markings in a hallway, you know, things meander. Um, we did have a brief conversation at the beginning that the facilities that I had personally visited that had walking tracks in the gym, unless they spent the money and netted the whole thing, it was an absolute nightmare because you're walking and you're getting hit by that. You either, yeah. you open and close the facility. We're going to close the, it's walking today. Great. I got 70 people that want to play basketball and two people that want to walk, but I'm closing the gym. But you had to invest in the netting. So it, those are just operational things that come into play as far as the value of a site. Because um, we saw two-story auctions as well yeah. in our tour that had elevated walking track, but then someone through the building too. So there's a there's a merit right. ways to make and it happen. Desirability, you know, for putting, you know, getting a membership to walk around a basketball court, you know. Meh. If I have a really nice elevated walking track that I can have my kids on, my dad on, and yeah. and you know, I mean, it Walk would matter. Somebody out of practice, down right. low, or whatever. That's yeah. the key. Kids at practice, you can go to the gym. Right? Yeah. I think that that booth based site, I remember back, showed us a, a step A and a step B. They had a building with a pool, and they added a field house and they connected the two. Yeah. And that was like, so that's one of the things. If you took these things and you said, we're going to build the field house somewhere over here, and the other part over there, that's the only way I can see breaking these up into like two separate ideas that, or you know, one side of school or whatever. I just don't see the value savings in these breaking them up. You know what I mean? In these options. In, in, these, in these options. These options that, like if you said we're going to build a dedicated field house, it's going to have X in it somewhere, and it costs this much money, and we have a second option to hit the other needs and somewhere else it's a different thing. Then you could say, well, this may be worth 20 million, this is worth 15 million or 30 million, but in one facility, you just don't have enough savings for the desirability for the people, I think. And not that you, you know, bigger is not always better, but it's such a, you know, you're cutting out such major pieces of either revenue or desirability for such a small cost savings. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. Yeah. Um, because at this point, the 9% is either, you're either in it or you're out of it when you go into the battle box for those things, I think. You know what I mean? With, Right. It's not like vote for A, which is 40 million, and vote for B, which is 90 million, and pick one. If these are the two options you're talking about, it's very limited. It's the thing that this, the, the shell of the building, the earthwork you have to do, the, the movement, the mechanicals, the HVAC, it's all of those things. Like 
shrinking the building by a gym or by a pool doesn't you don't eliminate any of those costs you might not you might actually make them higher in some ways because of the the energy recoveries that they, that, that you have in the different spaces it's not it's it, it's it's a core cost if you want to have a pool and a gym and in the same and other community spaces in the same building I agree. you have a roof and walls and earth and earthwork and all that stuff that has to be done no matter how not no matter how much you make it smaller but obviously there's an economy of scale there but to have a building that has core amenities is going to have this baseline cost that is going to be it's the same if it's you know a third bigger not to go off subject but i just need to take two seconds to thank everybody for the work they've done because the conversation we're having now compared to the conversation we had six seven months ago when we started this <laughs> is like light years away and understand <laughs> because we were talking about basic concepts and different things and now you guys are starting to see that a and b don't always equal c right when it comes to sliding scale we've had those conversations so Again, probably haven't said it enough, but thank you for your time and effort with working through this because it's a hard, you know, there's multiple facts and decisions to make, you know, but you're hitting your charge. And that's, that's well, you, you and the hired professionals have made it, in my opinion, a, a manageable task. Yes. Yeah. So I think everybody has chimed in a little bit on this. Are we at the point where we kind of want to do a straw poll on what we're thinking to give? These guys feedback on what they want to look at, or do we want to hear the rest of the rest of the program first? I think we probably have expressed enough common views that we're ready to vote on which of options one, two, and three we as a committee yeah. basis. Oh yeah, let me read this in too. This is Alex. Thank you for reminding yeah. me. Um, this will just take a second. Um, uh, Alex sent a lot of comments that you wanted to write into the record. Um, I appreciate the work that UTL has done in the project thus far. While the cost estimate is a large number, it is not overly surprising knowing today's construction climate. We should keep in mind that the final number will not be any lower than it is today. The longer we wait, the quicker option three becomes the cost to build option, the cost of option one to build. With that aside, the overall cost differential between the options is not dramatic enough for me to say that any other options are better than option one. We are talking about numbers just south of 100 million, a three to $8 million difference in price to provide the community everything that they wanted or need is not worth messing around with. The community center, this is a community center that will be there for generations to come. Scarborough is only growing and the need for additional amenities for those residents will only increase. Dialing back priorities, and usable space today is only going to be problematic tomorrow and the usefulness of the facility will not be achieved as we are all desiring. The cost recovery seems like a number that could be improved over time as the town develops a, their business model and revenue lines without compromising the affordability to Scarborough residents. One particular comment on the schematic design, we haven't really gotten to that yet, is that I am not confident that the replacement Parks and maintenance space is sufficient for the needs, but it is 100% a necessity to be replaced if taken away from the community center. That will that will need ample space indoors for equipment, plus outside to store ag supplies and various attachments. Having this entrance more tucked away with the exterior space for storage will be more aesthetically pleasing in the end. I look and just some pleasantries at the end. So I don't. I think we heard essentially a similar comments from mm -hmm. everybody else here. He agrees. I wasn't even here to get a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think you wrote that after you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, today at 2.45 p.m. from Alex Marshall. And as a parks guy, he's always thinking of the park shop. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the will what of the committee? Are we here to vote? Well, I, mean, I don't know what that means. UTO and, and the team need to know to, yeah. to move to their next step. They need to know which of these kind of um, options they are going to be going forward and citing on the on the parcel and then doing, I think, Visually. some ele elevations and, and schematics and that type of thing. I think as long as their report reflects the fact that there were options that were considered in the discussion that was led to the to the opinion of of an option mm -hmm. for them to to move 
it's a little boring. Instead of just giving the impression that we focused on one option, that's all it was. Yeah, I, I, I think their their report needs to document that. Brent, you're yeah. nodding your head yes. Is that? Yep. Right. The final report will document all the uh, deliberations that the committee has made, and we'll want to make sure for future committees that they understand all the discussions that were had. So it'll be reflected both in the meeting minutes and in the content of the final report itself. I think that's fine. That, that after weighing the options, it wasn't enough sufficient. And, you know, the yeah, committee did not just like the, with that first option. It's just like the four site options that right. were considered and how we evolved. We gravitated into one. We gravitated yeah. into one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, I'll just make the motion that we we have them continue on with option one for the next step in their work as we move forward to um, getting a final report done. Second. Second. Any, just, any further discussion on that? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. It's unanimous. So, okay. So there's some marching orders. You guys want to continue on with the rest of the construction stuff? Great. Absolutely. Um, so we, we can go through this this quickly. We'll develop this, you know, more, but I, it's just worth uh talking briefly about, you know, really what, what the estimate was based on and, and, uh, you know, this has been circulated. So uh, hopefully people had a, a chance to look at it and, you know, this is kind of part of the next phases where we, you know, generate, um, you know, some excitement about the project and, and really begin, you know, with every phase, there's a little more specificity. So you know, the building program that we've always been returning to and making sure there's, there's buy-in from everyone. And this has been reworked, you know, multiple times since we started presenting it in the fall. Um, and just to, to go over again, you know, we, we looked at three sites and uh, looked at the ice rink site for a number of reasons, you know, great centrally located near parking because the site was maybe slightly smaller than we, uh, you know, had hoped or what we, we recommended. Uh, and there, there seems to be opportunities to maybe share parking. The timing will need to be de determined if this is the selected site for, for the project uh, traffic study, et cetera. Uh, there's some wetlands on site that will need to be evaluated with a, with a real wetlands survey, but that really had some some uh, really benefits uh, of looking at this site for uh, you know just the centrally located and and near um, you know schools, but also residents, etc. Um, so you know this, we're going to be doing a, a test fit for this, and we we always include this this slide. So you know what is a test fit? This is not. Uh, this is basically a proof of concept, so it's it's not meant to be necessarily the design. It will have design elements because it helps understand scale and and use and familiar sizes, et cetera. And so we're testing you know, the program on the site, um, and it might not actually be you know the final site. You know, as, as we talked a little bit about the uh, like what Todd said, um, there are some elements about this about the site that made this uh, helpful in doing this cost estimate because in some ways it could be. Uh, picked up and it's somewhat portable as opposed to like you know the the sites up on the municipal hill that required like the blasting that was just like not a number uh, you know that will that would be above and beyond if we looked at a site that was more challenging this one kind of had an average amount of trees it had some wetlands it, it was in some ways and it's nice and, and nice and flat so it kind of isolates a lot of the cost of the building but again you know this is this is not a design proposal it's really how impacts and arrangements could be could be looked at on the site um and it's always a, a great opportunity to, to have it really start to, to feel uh, more real, but in a way that solicits feedback and and uh, and greater understanding of the community at large. So uh, just to, to look at the site really quickly, this is the maintenance shop area that would need to be replaced. There's the existing practice field. We were able to accommodate uh, some uh, modest, you know, basically middle school fields on the site with, you know, hopefully within the wetland buffer. Uh, there's the existing, it does su supplant the ice rink area, but um, I think the future of the ice rink is a little bit in, in question with the town is worth with discussing. Um, how, many, how many skating days do we have on that ice rink on average <laughs> last year for years? We didn't even have a handful this year. You know, so again, there are discussions on how to look at other options, temporary modular stuff that take less ice, less water to freeze versus in some areas we have six to 15 inches of water trying to freeze just doesn't work in this climate anymore. So mm -hmm. we're looking at alternates, regardless of whatever happens here, we're looking at options. Yeah. Is, is, just a, is there any 
cost for we put adding those couple fields there in this estimate at all, or is it just yeah? Is that just great? It's, 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 it's it is okay. Yeah. Yeah, they were able to break out pricing for, for replacing a field. Okay, thank you. The one thing, Keith, I will share with this group in the public right now is we had, Keith had asked when we were doing the test fit stuff, we met with town engineer and town planner to kind of see their concerns, buffers, parking share, things that you guys have discussed. Um, they had talked about doing test pits and a traffic study on this site, met with a firm, got a quote, met with a town manager, and then I relayed back to Keith as late as it was, that we put those things on hold because those were costs that we weren't ready to expend now because again we don't know what our final timeline is but again hearing the comments from the open house we started to research what and we were going to be upwards in the 20 to thirty thousand dollar range to do that work so we decided to wasn't appropriate to ask for those funds or expend those funds and that would be a future step down the road if we were because again we know that we have to deal with traffic if this were to be the final site so um those are part of the long-term, no matter where you go um, with this building, um, but we just decided not to dive that deep into the site. Plus, I think uh, the the recent experience with the with the Wentworth School uh, relative to subsurface conditions and foundation elements, it's gonna be very similar. I, I did some work with, with the building, building committee and we had some, subsurface information <coughs> that proved to be correct. And I see no reason why it's going to be substantially different moving to the uh, ice rink site. Great, thank you. So I just want to share that. Great. Um, you know, this this is you know, an idea of the you know how the spaces can be arranged on site, uh trying really trying to maximize the amount of, of parking, uh provide a, a reasonable amount and you know, thinking that it would probably be shared um oh, with the, the parking along. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the road right here, but the road that the backs up against the um uh the stadium oh, and then so, well sorry. you've got municipal drive and then you've got the emergency fire lane. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> And then looking at the at the plan, uh, you know, the just very quickly to talk about conceptually how it's arranged. You know, the ground floor uh, would be most of the big athletic spaces, a, a generous uh, a plaza that faces out onto the athletic fields, uh, good visibility coming onto the uh, onto the site or approaching the site from uh, from the drive uh, around the backside of uh, of the town hall, um, and then from. Uh, the playing fields across the way, uh, some kind of plaza out front, uh, and then a, a generous reception area and entry, and a you know a monumental stair that leads up upstairs, uh, and that would be kind of like the gate uh, that would uh, pr provide a convenient way to uh, to kind of sort out uh, members who are paying for the athletic component versus uh, community members who could just go up for uh, the, the free components uh, that are that are part of the community. So. You're looking at uh, stacking the community um, the community program on the second floor with a big a lobby that uh, allows uh, that becomes almost like that that public space that people uh, on the committee and in the in the community thought that was was lacking in town uh, community services up there the uh, the uh, walking track around the gym uh, spectator sitting seating above the pool. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the meeting rooms, the game room, child watch, multi-purpose room on, on you know, two hallways that really both spill out into a, a pretty generous uh, central area that would, would overlook um, both the main athletic spaces. And, you know, we, you could, you know, imagine in your head that there's gla you know, glass in either way. So those are some of the features that was uh, really called to members of the committee as we looked at certain sites like over at, a, at um, uh, in Bath. Um, so this this was the the basis of what we had uh, priced as a as a kind of party uh, of how we saw the spaces could be uh, organized on on the site uh, in a way and you know it, even since doing this you know, we had a productive conversation with members uh, in the planning department and we've been scratching our head about this and you know once you get to this point it's it's hard not to want to keep keep developing it because uh, you start to see the potential on on the site and the program uh, but again this is really just a test fit this is a proof of concept about about how we, we uh, might start a conversation about how we move forward. Um, any quick questions about the uh, about the test fit plans? 
No, and again, I just want to make a comment for the public is that this isn't a final design. This is to make sure all the elements that we budgeted and, and construction cost out would fit on an existing site. Because Keith had mentioned when we met with planning, they were going down a rabbit hole, which I love because it's what you want to do, but how it faces and who walks where and how do you, you know, but that's not the phase. This is a funding phase. This is a, you know, does it fit? Does it work? That phase. So, um, that so is a way, a way square, it could fit. A way it could fit, right. right. But yeah. they were going down to where the door faces and how you get kids from the playground. Like they were designing, and that's a, yeah, that's another mm -hmm. piece. It so begins that basically thing. this gym takes up this much space. Yeah. And what three, put a rectangle on the board, put the end. Right. This yeah. all fits in the like those, like, when we had those blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, With some yeah. continuity. I mean, it could yeah, fold yeah. in this fashion, but again, when you yeah. talk about design elements, yeah. that's a whole nother. That's whole, yeah, that's, there's another phase. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different. Yeah. Glenn, I see your wheels turning. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got the AED. No, I, I think it's, uh, it, it, um, just, we just are going to need to emphasize to the community that. Our charge was to collect the data for what everybody wanted. This is a building that serves the purposes, it meets, it meets everybody's needs. It's not necessarily what we're, we're not saying we can afford it. We're not saying this is what we we want. I, I don't want the wrong message to get out about what we're suggesting right. before it goes to the town council because the town council is going to that this and decide what we can afford and they're gonna cut. Um, I, I do have concerns about a message getting out that, oh, the town's now gonna build an $82 million facility when that's not really what we're deciding tonight. And I think we wanna make that clear. Yeah. Is that a, is that a okay, accurate statement? No, I tried to make that same statement. I think we're speaking the same language. Yeah, yeah. That, that message is already out. It, exactly. No, uh, we, our neighborhood got a, Blast with those numbers, with those eighty million dollar numbers. So, yeah. so, so there is messaging that's already out on. Yeah, well, that's, at this point in time, it's disingenuous. Yes, and, 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 and whoever's sending that message out, they know that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm on. Great. Yeah. So, looking at the next steps, you know, we we. Um, you know, we we are not making any changes to the, the program. And so I think, you know, the estimate that we've already done stands and that's going to be a good document going forward. Uh, we are going to um, uh, make some, you know, modest updates to the to the layout as we are continuing to massage it. Uh, and, you know, we could, you know, a lot of these were kind of contingent on the decision uh, tonight, but uh, confirm the final layout. We also owe some, uh, a little more uh, development in terms of the design and massing uh, and some uh, some more specificity about uh, some of the site conditions and and the layout on the site. You know, obviously the the, the drawings that we showed were were really pretty high level. Uh, and I think you know just for the sake of of showing a little bit more of the of the scale, um, you know, we're we're uh, uh, offering to um, you know bring that up to a level where uh, people can start to really see some architecture and there, start to get a better sense of scale. Do a little bit of an analysis on how some of these uh, in a similar way that a three D test fit seeing how these big elements fit on the site, um, you know, some views uh, uh, from nearby just so people can get a sense of, of you know, how these, how these fit within uh, our community. That's gonna be kind of the next bit. And so we, when we meet again uh, in July, uh, we'll bring some, some visuals that help kind of, uh, you know, architecturalize the program. And, and so you can start to get to see what like a 3D text the test will be. But again, you know, this is still pretty high level. It's, it's schematic in nature. Uh, it's contingent on the site. It's really just the, the next level to see how all the pieces might fit together at a three um, schedule. And so we will be working on that alongside of starting to bring together the pieces of the of the final report. Uh, and then we talked about a, a presentation of the, the town council uh, in the middle of uh, this, this, the last third of August. Um, Keith, just can I ask a question for our, for our next kind of conversation on the agenda is that evening, your piece there, again, depending on what conversation and where we go, how long do you anticipate that? Again, the reason why I'm asking is I want to make sure we have time to discuss funding options and and, and have that conversation on that evening as well. Um, the the massing. This is, this is oh. Go ahead, Darren. Go ahead. So, sorry, sorry, this is Darren. I, I meant to say this earlier, but we have a we developed with another group um, 
a funding option kind of flow chart uh, that talks about traditional and non-traditional uh, funding options that you could at least consider. Now, it doesn't have dollar amounts and those kinds of things, but it at least goes ahead and tries to identify all the opportunities you might have available to you. I have that in kind of a boilerplate document that I could send out to the group or send it through Keith um, at UTL tomorrow. So that way, at least it got you thinking in those directions. I think that would be fine to be an addendum to the report that we're having, but that's nothing that this group is going to, you know, spend any time working on or considering at all. It's, it's just, I think it's, in my opinion, it's premature. That's like, right. Very much premature to kind of entertain those kind of ideas, but I think it would be good information. Um, and I, and I thank you and I welcome that to be part of the report for sure. Great. Sorry about that. No, no problem at all. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we could keep it pretty brief, you know, I think just t 10 or 10 or so minutes just to show um, some some views and how and, you know, talk about the scale of the building and uh, and and some of that. And and uh, we're going to probably engage a little bit more with Weston and Samson on the landscape side to talk about where we see some opportunities, provide some idea about, um, you know, like some precedents and inspiration images. Uh, so I think we can if the. The nitty gritty well, of speeding. Put it into ten minutes, but oh no. Yeah, no, no. no. We're, I'm not saying that. I just again, if we have other conversations, you know, just to be able to leave. We normally we end with your stuff, and so I just want to make sure if if we had to have conversation, there was 10, 15 minutes on our end to have those conversations. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I think you're. I think you, you, at this point, you are your committee's doing the heavy lifting in a lot of ways, and so you know this would be you know trying to fill out the picture uh, alongside you know what what you're discussing. So yeah, I think. That there's there'll be plenty of time for a really substantive conversation. Okay. So you said Keith, Brett, Aaron? Good. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, next item of the agenda is uh, public comment. Are there members of the public who would like to speak at this point? Um, Go ahead. Yeah, sure. First of all, I'm Allison Wilson. I will have since February. I have a speech. Neighbor, neighbor. Um, and I'm, I apologize for coming in late, but I'm for the meeting, which is happens quite a bit. But it's not just your meeting; it's it's a lot of meetings in town. So I do apologize for coming in late. Um, I, the the at first I want to address, and, and you know, I say this respectfully, the comment about the owners putting something out there as being disingenuous. Mm -hmm. You're putting it out there because. The slideshow is, you know, it's attached to the agenda. So John, anybody, John Q. Public, who is going to look at that and maybe not understand what the committee's charge is and what you're doing, is going to see that the you know, they're going to automatically assume that the town is looking at an 82, 83 million dollar facility, and then when the committee decides to go for the most expensive version of it, you know, that's going to become an assumption too. So, you know, people are going to have opinions about it. It's a big ticket number. I think when we started with the committee, the the number, the first number that was floated was around 35 million. And I've heard Todd meeting the meeting the meeting go, you know, it's 45, it's 50, you know, so and and the other piece of this is you know, looking at the whole, it, it, it's also about the process of decision and when, yeah, and you're, you're, you're the gal that came in to replace somebody. No. Uh, no. So we will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wrong. But, but my point being is that, and I understand the process, but the process is, okay, let's, let's take what people want and then look into it. And, but when, when the town, generally as well what would you like there's no price tag associated with what you would like you know so people say oh i love that and i love this and it happened with the school it happened with the library and so i want to say the community center is being set up to fail but you know people go to the open house and see oh that looks cool like the red pool it looks like fun town splash and me as a taxpayer to see that that you know this is something that the town would like me to fund, 
you know, I agree with this gentleman here who talked about, um, you know, a pool to me is a competition pool that our high school or another high school, other schools in the area can take advantage of and something that needs to have spectator viewing, you know, for those purposes. It's not, you know, I don't see it for the general public to be finding something that looks like an amusement park or you know, you're the lady from Piper Shores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we talked at the open yeah. house and need for a warming pool. There are warming warmer. pools, a warmer pool. But you know, if it's something that is for therapy, then there are plenty of those, you know, in the area that people can, you know, facilities that people can use. And I'll, I'll go back and say one more time, I happen to swing at Cape, Cape Elizabeth, and I'm not advocating that we should only have a six-lane pool. They have a six-lane pool and they do everything with it. From mommy and me for you know infants all the way up to seeing the swim, seeing the water aquatics, and they get it, the kayak lessons for the high school kids, they get it all done. So, um, and it's 80, 82 degree pool, plus they have a hot tub and it works. So, you know, again, when, if we're trying to put something out with a school that needs to be done also, you know, I, I would think there'd be a sensitivity to efficiencies is, you know, and not, not go for, you know, the Mercedes Benz when, you know, a good kind of CRV will get us there too. Because it's clearly something that the community wants, but we, I, I don't think bells and whistles are going to help get it done. So that's, that's enough on that. And the other couple of things I, I just wanted to address is when you talk about sponsorship, now you're in my wheelhouse, because that's what I did for a living for a number of years and raised millions and millions of dollars doing that. Then before this goes to any kind of referendum, I would I would like to see what that sponsorship plan is. So I think we have a third party and then we can do a quiet phase, we can get right. memos of understanding. I, you know, and I'd like to for, you know, just me personally, because it's you know, what I know about, would like to see what the plan is instead of just saying, well, we're going to get, right. you know, $20 million in sponsorship with naming rights and all that stuff. Well, you know, so where is it before, you know, before the town is committed to do this? Um, the other, the traffic study, I think also the public would need to see before you know, that it goes to referendum only because if it's going where, you know, it, where it makes sense to go, it's going to be huge. And I think people are going to want to know about that. And um, lastly, when, well, I just make this point too. When we say there's not enough cost reduction for what people want, you know, I also keep in mind there is a there are significant number of taxpayers in the community who probably will never use this. And I, you know, I'm, I'm only speaking for myself, but like the where Bill and Patrick and I live, the a lot of seasonal residents, they're not going to take advantage of this either. They're going to, you know, go to the beach. So when you're you're looking at what people want, I think you have to look, look, you know holistically at all of Scarborough. And there is going to be a group of people who will never take advantage of this because, you know, it's not what they're here for. So that's my two cents. Anything else from the public? All right. Okay, thank you. Um, the disingenuous comment was about taking what is fact and actually in these things and saying, the town is moving forward to build this and they're going to put it on the ballot this fall, which is what that's that's what's just in general. Yeah, and, and I appreciate yeah. that, but perception, you know, perception is a lot of it. So it, it, people, people, I don't know what else we're supposed to do. I mean, we're not, I, I can't you, stop people from making assumptions. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't stop them, yeah. you know, but just because they're being, I think, disingenuous, maybe misinformed is a better choice. Sure. Sure. Can, can I comment to that? Mm -hmm. I, Totally agree with you. That's why I brought that issue up because right. I didn't want the public to to see the documents 
and make the wrong assumptions. And I, I don't know if we're doing a real good job of saying what our charge is or what it's limited to or where it goes from here. Um, and I think that's a real important message to get out because we're not making decisions yet on right. the cost of this building. Um, but if that that incorrect message gets out like that, it's going to be sabotaged before it goes any further. Right. And yeah. that would be a shame because there are components of the center that that everybody wants and most mm -hmm. people would support. Yep. And especially on top of the rebound, which mm -hmm. is a lot of people are really. So the the report hopefully would have all of those pieces of information in there. And I would hope that people would would look at it and understand the actual source documents and the data that we were we are gonna have in there, as opposed to just hearing a snippet of something on a post number from a neighbor that is not not informing them of the whole right. picture. Just but, a perception that I was right. right. I'll add right. one more layer to that. So because again, process. You know, so that may be the case, and you're doing what you're charged to do. But now it goes to council. This happened with the library. This happened with the school, and nobody wants to get down the weeds. So the mantra is, well, let's let the voters decide. And the end. So the, again, it it looks like the town is, you know, pushing this forward. So. You know, I'm just saying, you know, to make, to be successful, I think that you have to show that you're listening to people, but on the other hand, you're not like, you know, going for the most expensive thing, you know, we could possibly have when maybe something that scaled in. Right. And yeah, that, could yeah. achieve the same thing. And I, and I think that's where we are ending up. I think that's where we may end up uh, with, with this with this plan that we're going to have. Are you willing here. to scale? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, <laughs> right. we did dramatically. I mean, there's a lot of things that we cut, and it'll show in the report all the the options that we had on the table that were paired. We were paired size, down. space, size, function. space, function. Absolutely, it's programs. Writes the report. Do you feel they, yeah, they do everything, and then the help with their other consultants. We have the opportunity to like review a draft before. Yeah, they're nodding their head. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yes. And that's what's important about the July meeting is they'll kind of update us on where they are. We'll get we'll get something to look at prior to it hitting council, and I made some notes here. I'll I'll work with town um, communications just to give a kind of an update status of where we are. And again, like I said at the beginning, of the meeting, I think there's things that we need to do before we consider going to referendum, and that's part of the, the financial, that's part of the funding, that's part of the marketing. So, yeah, there's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, all those things you mentioned. The traffic. You know, yes. that's the next phase. We're, 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 we're at step one. Those are those are the hundreds of right. steps from now. You know, I mean, those are right. a lot of things that need to happen right. between now and then. But we have to get a lot of people to digest. We have to get our charge in front of council to say, "This is where we're at. Tell us what's next. When is next?" Yeah. So we can start working down that mm -hmm. pathway. I would just think that one of the things that we're, the reason we're here is because two consecutive surveys in a row. The number one thing that was wanted was some sort of community center. With the top of, I mean, and they bumped it off once, and then they, you know, we did, you did yeah. the study before. It has been the top thing forever. So I think that the community has spoken what it ends up looking like in the end, and how the pain point of the cross and what it costs and what you put in it is certainly going to be part of that next phase. But clearly, from previous studies, like previous surveys, and then the recent surveys that came out, it is still the number one thing. That in the school, the two number one things in the town that everybody agrees something has to happen. So I think this was that, you know, finally given the charge to start down that path again and take all the studies of what we learned in the past and all the new amenities, because it wasn't the same thing 10 years ago. It might have been one, two, and three on the list. It's yeah. changed. Yeah. And then this is what the new, I think this is kind of what the most recent data told us is the newest, you know, what needs to, what they're trying to look for. Yeah. Okay. Capital things. But the number one things have been growth and taxes and traffic. That that's what people are concerned about. These may be top capital wishes, but the number one thing that people have been concerned about is the growth. And but uh, but another thing that I would say is that they also want to they want something like this too to justify what their money goes towards. Right. We're we're one of the biggest communities. We don't have. 
and a holistic yeah. approach to it. So it doesn't just speak to one neighborhood that may not have a need for something and, and an age set. It, it speaks to, I mean, there's people with small kids, there's older people, there's people that live at the beach, there's people that don't live near the beach. So I think holistically, it speaks to everybody. Yep, agreed. So our next meeting is uh, July 18th. Do we know where and when is that? It's a seven o'clock at location. I got to double check because um, there's been a lot of meetings for FEMA bumped us out of um, tonight out of, um, excuse me, out of the uh, public safety room. So I'll, I'll get you the location. But it, okay. again, we've been staying at seven unless people want to change it. But that's the, the date and the time. 18th. 18th, Thursday, the 18th. And then we're tentatively going to go from that to the August 21st council meeting. Yeah. And that'll be a workshop with council and those usually start either at five or six. So mm -hmm. depending on the time frame that we will get a final time frame based on the suggestion. Okay. okay, we need an hour and a half to present or whatever you need for presentation and, and feedback. So yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear that's a that's a workshop. Yeah, that's a workshop. Do they do they just have one meeting in August yes. and July yeah. still? And it's usually the third Wednesday, right? Yes. So that so they're gonna have a workshop with us for an hour and a half, two and hours, have meeting and then the council meeting yep. right afterwards. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there's there any part of the council meeting that would you anticipate that we would be part of? Not that I know of right no. now. Okay. And I haven't been told anything about what's happened since usually between five and six, depending on how long they want to have to allocate for Okay. With a presentation, gentlemen, while we still got you, what do we anticipate a presentation on your end? Forget what we get for questions, you know, for presentation wise and question and answer. Uh, duration, the length of yeah, presentation sorry, duration. If based on you know, when we do our usually what happens is the committee chair does an intro and then we present, you know, the report through our consultants, and then there's questions to us, and then obviously conversation. We can't judge which questions the conversation will be. But as far as a ballpark on your estimate for presentation, is it half an hour? Is it 20 minutes? Is it 45 minutes? I'd say 20 minutes we can cover the major points. If we need to tailor it to a shorter amount of time so we leave more time for conversation, we can do that too. Okay. That's remarkably short, I think. Is it really 20 minutes, you think? We can move. Okay. I, don't, I, I, I would take your advice too. We haven't presented to town council. Um, and so we could use your advice how much detail we should go into. I think we want to hit all the major themes that we've presented and bring people along with the process. If we need to get into detail of each step of the way, then certainly we could use more time than that. I would say once we see what the report kind of shape looks like, then we can see how hard it is to understand and what points that, you know, to be able to really say, okay, this is going to need a deep dive, you know, because I think, you know, so. Okay. We can make that call in July. Great. Um, and do you anticipate, given the direction that we're able to give you tonight, that we might be able to see a draft, like, let's say a week before our July meeting? Is that feasibly possible? I don't want to hold you to it, but some some period of time so that the committee members have I don't know, 72 hours. Or are we gonna have to, to plan to a, or are we gonna have to plan a, a meeting after that July meeting before the 21st? Let's aim to get mm -hmm. you the draft a few days beforehand. Um, and we'll Todd, maybe we can coordinate on specific dates. Uh, you know, just thinking ahead, we're getting a little into vacation and holiday season. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we're realistic about our own commitments. Fair. Well, I can move back with Patrick and then he can, you know, when you guys have an actual kind of breakout. So, great. All right. Thank you very much. Anything else? Anybody? I should do adjourn. Do adjourn. Okay, second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.